Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be running through some of my personal tips about buying a Mark V Golf GTI, basically as a result of receiving so many messages to do so. Now, if I'm honest, I'm a little bit apprehensive about making this video because essentially, I'll be running through some of the main faults with the Mark V, which may result it looking a little bit pants, but I can assure you that is not the case. This car is an absolutely phenomenal car for its price bracket. And those of you who tuned into the recent video will know that I discussed exactly that. So what we're gonna do without any further hesitation, we're gonna hop in the car shortly and actually go through one main tip for you guys, which doesn't just apply to the Mark V, but any car which you're thinking of buying. This video has been brought to you by Carly Connected Car. Carly is a useful little device used to access your car's data through the OBD port, showing health statistics, history checks, and to even unlock hidden features. Carly also offers the ability to run a used car check, which is exactly what we're going to explore now. So as you guys may remember, I have worked with Carly before. We did some nice coding bits to the M140 and we will be doing a few bits to this a little bit later on. But the main thing which I want to focus on in this segment is the used car check, something which I have not done to this car yet, something which I wish I maybe did before buying it, and that is here listed on the uh, the main features. Sorry, go back to that. So you can do a health check. So basically, if you've got any fault codes, you can check that, diagnose that, do some customization, i.e. coding, but the used car check is what we're gonna be looking at. And the main features of this is basically to check if there's been any uh, mileage discrepancies, whether the car's been clocked or anything. And also here, check driving behavior. That's quite interesting. Be interesting to see what it says about mine. <laughs> Carly has detected no tampering. So this 90,971 miles is legit which is what we like to see. Obviously one vehicle identification number. Always handed that there's only one. If there was two or more, then that would be a little bit worrying. Brilliant. That's good. That's a relief. <laughs> So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head back and we're gonna actually gonna to go to the customization. We're gonna click coding possibilities. This is the main thing really, which I know a lot of people will be uh, excited about. And that's one thing which I know I am as well because there's some really cool things which we can do. Definitely one thing worth noting as well with the coding, it does make a backup. So anything you do by accident or you wanna revert, you can do that with a click of a button. That's all nice and handy, but we're just gonna check compatibility for coding and have a little play. So here we are, these are all the different things which we can code. Comparing this to the M140i, it's definitely a shorter list of things which we can do, obviously being an older car, not as many ECUs which you can go in and code, but I think, I don't know, let's just go into this one here, read out. I mean, even just with this one thing, there's a long list of things you can do actually. For an 07 car, it's, uh, it's not too bad at all. Now this is one thing I'm definitely gonna turn off, headlight cleaning. So that is basically, when you turn on the washers, every now and again, it will then, do the headlights as well, an utterly pointless thing. Um, and basically if the car's clean, it then sprays um, washer fluid all over the front of the car. So we're gonna turn that off and we're gonna code now on that. Get that turned off, which will be lovely. There we go, coding was successful, turn the ignition off and then on again. So that's off and then back on. And obviously it's not gonna display it because it's not something which I can really check <laughs> unless I put the washers on. But anyway, yeah, big thank you to Carly for sponsoring this video. And with that said, let's uh, well go around the car and give you my personal tips of things which you should be aware about when buying a Mark GTI. Right, so Getting stuck in then with the known cosmetic faults with the Mark V GTI, and unfortunately, it does involve the dreaded R word, rust. Now, there's only two main areas which I've noticed are known to rust on the Mark V. The most common of those is, of course, the front wings. These tend to pickle up basically because all of the dirt, grime, and at this time of the year, salt builds up on the inside edge of the wing, which then over time creates some bubbling and rust on the outer edge here. Mine has been done, and I noticed that when buying the car and viewing it, because you can feel the hard edge of where the body shop has basically masked it up under there. It can't have been too bad because it has got the original wings. And one way which you can identify that is under the bonnet, just on the inner wing here, you can see a small date stamp just down there. It's quite hard to identify, but it reads 0507. So basically that means the fifth week of 2007. And on this side, I believe it's 4606. So very late 2006. If that doesn't really correlate to the year of the car, maybe an 05 or an 08, 
um, then that would identify that it's had new wings, which actually isn't really a bad thing because if the wings have been repaired, which is what's happened with this car, you don't know how bad it was. It could come back um, and uh, well, by basically getting new wings, that's one way to really prevent the issue. The second and final place which is known to rust on the Mark V GTI is on the rear boot latch. Now, basically the way it's designed, you have this big edge right around the outer rim, which then over time does mean that water can build up here and over time rust. Actually, if you can see on mine, there's almost like some sort of lime scale buildup or something just on that bottom bit there. Um, which is something I'm going to have to really keep an eye on. Um, but basically, if you open up the catch, you can see actually there's water in there at the moment, which is, uh, well, yeah, definitely something to look out for. And actually, the boot latch as well, another issue with that, it does tend to stick, which basically when opening the boot would mean the catch would stay at that position. Quite an easy fix, I believe, and the part is quite cheap, but not something which is really wrong with mine. Moving back to the front of the car again, to a very common issue with the headlights going cloudy. Now, it's basically something which happens over time with UV light, um, basically just affects the clear coat on the headlights. Now, a very easy fix. Again, you can sand it down and polish it back up, but if it does get really bad, it can cause an MOT failure, which actually, when looking back through the MOT history of this car, it actually failed on just that. In fact, you can see the edge on this particular car where they obviously done it with the bonnet closed and you can see how that's still quite cloudy and this is a little bit better although it is coming back so when the car is detailed and goes through its cosmetic restoration soon in fact actually that video might have already gone live then that will of course be sorted again like i said a very very common issue and one which is very easy to fix but definitely something to be wary of because it can result in the dreaded mot failure Now, as things are starting to get a little bit snowy here, I don't know if you can see the snowflakes coming down onto the car at the moment, we have the bonnet up to actually go through quite a few things to be made aware of in terms of maintenance to the engine and things which do need replacing over time with the Mark V GTI. And actually, the engine is quite warm at the moment, so I can warm my hands up at the same time. Lovely. Snow is actually coming down thick and fast now. I think this side of my face is gonna slowly just turn all snowy and white in a minute. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna soldier on. Um, cam belt and water pump. One thing which definitely needs to be kept on top of and actually something which was definitely overdue on this car. In fact, it was five years overdue for a cam belt. Um, not ideal. Now it's not really the end of the world if it is overdue and needs doing, maybe just ask for a little bit of money off, which is exactly what I did with this, um, but just get it done as soon as possible. If it means trailering the car to a VW specialist or main dealer, then do that. I stupidly kind of drove it, um, but it was okay. The car's still in one piece and it has now a new cam kit and water pump. Now the maintenance intervals on this do vary kind of where you look really. But I'd say generally around 60,000 miles or four years, uh, whichever comes first, that's one thing to note. In fact, this car wasn't overdue on mileage, but time because it was a London car, so it didn't really do many uh, miles, but just did a lot of hours, a lot of driving hours. Now, it's normally about 400 pounds generally uh, to get it done. Not astronomical, but something which, to be honest, not a lot of people really tend to do because the car is quite cheap now. It's an old car. People do struggle to keep up with the maintenance. It's good to also do the tensioners and the water pump at the same time, just because this car is direct fuel injection. So over time, carbon buildup can be an issue. Lots of hidden things to be uh, aware of, really. Moving on, the cam follower. That is something which I think generally should be replaced every 20,000 miles. Only a tiny little thing which needs doing, but if it does fail and it does go, it can cause quite a lot of other big issues. Um, so definitely something to look at doing. Please note as well um, that all of this has been done on this car. Um, I basically, when I bought it, after driving it with a five year overdue cam belt. Yeah, that one. Um, I had a big overhaul on my car, took it to a VW specialist, had anything that needed doing done because this is ultimately my daily driver, um, something which I use to, to drive to shoots and everything like that. And basically now on days like today where I don't really feel like driving the 140. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you can see me right now. I am shivering quite badly, but 
Fun times. <laughs> Again, moving on, uh, diverter valve. That's another thing, cheap little part, something which a lot of people overlook as well. Basically the rubber seal around it perishes, um, basically causes a boost leak. Same with the PCV valve, something which is really easy to check and maintain. Um, basically with the car running, if you listen for like a whistling noise, it's basically the vacuum leak and essentially means that you've got a boost leak. So maybe if you, you're driving along and you put your foot down and you notice that the power is not quite there, it could be that. Have a listen under the bonnet, listen for a little whistle or a squeak. Could be that you've got yourself a little boost leak. Um, again, very common issue, but something which definitely needs to be done because you need to have all of those 200 horses working nicely. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't want this to put people off buying one of these cars. They're absolutely great. It's an old car now and maintenance to any car is very important. This is just the little quirks uh, of this car which you need to keep on top of really. Um, being a sub 5,000 pound car in most cases, it's not really that much money to, to maintain it properly, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of miles and even modifying it, which yes, this will be modified very soon. And to be honest, any VW specialist will be massively clued up on these. They're so common, there's thousands of them on the road. Um, and so yeah, you'll be in safe hands to get it all nice and sorted. Also, the, the obvious as well, the oil and filter change, keep up to the schedule on that, being an old car as well, especially when buying one, look at the service history. If it's done a lot of miles, make sure the services have been done uh, fairly regularly and you should be onto a winner really. Um, but I think before my hands fall off, I'm gonna hop in the car and actually speak about something which is uh, relative to this specific car, a DSG, something which definitely you need to make sure of as well. Ooh. Right, before we crack on, engine on, heated seat on, and relax. Okay, so, like I said, there's one thing with, well, this specific car being a DSG, which you need to take into account, and that is that the DSG has its own filter and oil, and so it does need to be maintained as well. Again, going back to what I said earlier on about these cars being old, and fairly cheap people tend to just do the basics minimal services each year just to get it through really and so they completely overlook having the dsg done now, basically one way which you can easily work out whether it's healthy um, is basically by from a standstill just um well just pulling away really if it's nice and smooth then it's fine if it's a bit clunky then it's basically overdue a bit of a service or overhaul. Now, if I just go over here, come to a stop again and demonstrate. Basically, like that. Nice and smooth, all nice and healthy, but something which definitely does need to be uh, maintained, um, something which can be done alongside maybe doing your cam belt or just a service. Now, actually, whilst we're in the car, there is something else which I have just remembered as well, not to really rub salt in the wounds and give something else which you need to be worried about, and that is the thermostat. Now, that is again something which is quite common with these, uh, something which I haven't had to do yet, and I don't actually believe it has been done. So it might be on its way out, shall we say. Now basically, when you're on a long drive and the car is warm, you should obviously be seeing the temperature gauge being at dead on 90. If it does maybe get to temperature, but then start to lose temperature again, that is a sign that the thermostat is gone, it needs doing, or if it doesn't actually reach 90, it kind of just hovers just below it. Again, something which either yourself or a VW specialist can, uh, can sort out for you. In my case, and definitely the VW specialist, I rarely trust myself to tie my own shoelaces correctly sometimes, so I think the thought of me working on my own car is a little bit far-fetched, but, um, but yeah, there's another thing for you, not to, uh, to worry you too much. Now looking through my notes very quickly, we are pretty much there, apart from one thing which I completely forgot to go through earlier on in the video, and that is actually to do with a cosmetic um, known issue, uh, which is relative to the 18 inch diamond cut Monza alloys, which of course this car has fitted. Um, the known issue is actually corrosion. Um, luckily, before I bought the car, this car actually had a wheel refurb, so they're all looking nice and fresh, even though I do have plans to replace the wheels on this, 
and also do some suspension bits and uh, anyway besides the point um, they do tend to corrode and in fact my center caps which I do have new ones on order um, have corroded so it's obvious that the wheels got refurbed but just not the center caps that is obviously an issue when you get the car washed and maybe you use uh, caustic products like wheel acid all that horrible stuff or maybe even just excessive salty roads like what we got at the moment. So basically just be careful, use the right products when cleaning your wheels, stuff like R and X and something like that, the active wheel cleaners, which go all nice and purple, non-caustic basically. And also just, um, well, yeah, wash your car regularly. And maybe when looking at a car, you see that they are heavily corroded. It will mean that you need a wheel refurb, which depending on where you go, and what finish you get could be fairly expensive. So definitely something to keep an eye out, but I think, that is going to wrap things up for me today. Quite um, an informative video for me for a change. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And again, a massive thank you to Carly for sponsoring this video again. Like I said on screen earlier on, you can get yourself a nice little discount with the OBD dongle. Make sure it is a nice car which you're buying. And when you've got it, you can do some nice coding bits to it as well. But um, yeah, I think as the snow is coming down thick and fast still, uh, it actually might have eased off a little bit. I need to uh, wrap this up and get home before it gets a little bit too snowy. So that's going to wrap things up for me today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures. Bye.